Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video we'll be creating two command line tools using Swift and the Swift Argument Parser Framework from Apple. We'll be building a password generator that we can access from the terminal, along with a tool for encrypting and decrypting documents. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If you've used the terminal application, you're using the command line. And there are many scripting tools available to you. For example, you can automate tasks using AppleScript as an example, using the OSA script command. Or you can use Homebrew to install many command line utilities. Most command line tools require argument parsing. And this means that when you execute the command, you also need to pass in some arguments or flags along with the command, and some might even be optional. So before we dive into creating our own command line tools, let's do a very quick introduction to what those terms mean and give you some familiar terminal commands as examples. If you open the terminal by default, you're in your home directory. If I type ls, we get a listing of all of our files in that directory. Now you can include an argument with that command that is the path to a different directory, either relative or to the specific directory, like if I want to see what's in my desktop. Or drill down into my documents backup data folder. Neither of these two commands take us out of the current directory. They're like a window into that other directory. And we can see that by finding the current directory using the present working directory or the pwd command. The string that follows the command is the argument. So if we want to move to another directory, we can use the cd command. If I type ls once more without an argument, I see the contents of that new directory. Some commands have more than one argument. And the key thing to know is that the order matters. Consider the copy command where I want to duplicate this file called sample text as sample to text. The copy command requires that the source name is first and the duplicate name is second. If we list again, we now see that we have both of those files on my desktop. If you want to see more detail about the files and folders in that directory, you can include one of the many flags. And flags are usually single letters preceded by a minus sign or a dash. For example, ls-l. This flag presents the listing that includes such things as content permissions, owners, size, and last modified date. If I use ls-a, it lists the files and directories, but also including hidden files and folders. And that's anything on the Mac that begins with a period. Now you can combine those two flags together as ls-a-l or simply ls-al. And the order doesn't matter. And options are the third thing that can be associated with a command. And options are key value pairs and they're friendly than arguments in that they can occur in any order if there are more than one of them and you can provide default values to use so they can be omitted. Here's an example of the tail command that has an option of minus n and it requires a value that is an integer along with the argument that is the name of the file. And what this does will return the last five lines of a file with the name pull to refresh.md. I recommend that you view the documentation page for the argument parser framework on Apple's GitHub account. I'll leave a link in the description below. You'll get an overview along with links to getting started along with more details on what we've just covered, namely arguments, options, and flags. Now there are more topics that I don't cover, such as option groups and parsable arguments, but hopefully after working through the two examples I'm gonna go through here, you'll be able to explore more as your needs demand. So the first thing that we'll need to do is to create a folder for our first example project. We're gonna create a password generator that'll generate a random password at a length of our choosing by passing in an argument for the length. And we'll also be using some flags so that we can specify whether or not our password will use uppercase letters, 
numbers, or special characters, or a combination of all three, as well as the default lowercase letters. Since I'll be using terminal a lot, we're creating command line utility after all, instead of using the finder to create a new folder, I'll use the make directory or mkdir command to do that on my desktop. So I see that I'm already there. So make directory called password generator or pw generator. And let me cd into that directory. Then I can use the swift package init command using the option type, that's dash dash type, which is the key, passing in the value executable. See, we're already using options. This creates a new Swift command line package. And we can verify that it's working by running the package with Swift run. This will take a couple of seconds to compile. And if it's working, you should see hello world printed to the console. The next step is to add Swift argument parser as a dependency so that we can use it. So open the folder and then using Xcode, open the package.swift file. This will open the Xcode project. So make sure that you click on the package.swift in the navigator to display the package.swift content. Now, if you're going to be requiring a specific Mac OS, like say, for example, the latest version 12 to your code, because you want to use the latest Swift, you'll need to specify that. We won't be, but I'm going to add it anyway. So after an aim, we'll press enter and then enter a new argument called platforms. And this requires an array. And our array will have one item only, which is Mac OS. And the version is V12. We will be having dependencies. So we'll need to add the argument parser as a dependency to our Swift project. So let me return to the website now and click on the link to getting started. And we'll see that we have a Swift dependency that requires that we include the URL and from what versions. So we can copy the code directly from here and then just paste it into our app. The target requires a name which is already entered. And in the dependencies array, we can add the product where the product name is argument parser. And that's what we use when we use the import. And the package is the last part of the URL, but without that git extension. Well, now we can start coding. And our entry point is in the sources PW generator folder. And that's the file named main. Now you can add as many other Swift files to this directory if you want, if you want to add your own supporting models and functions, and you can reference those from the main file itself. But our app is going to be simple, so we can do all our coding here. So first we'll import argument parser, and we'll import foundation. Now there are a couple of requirements. We'll need a struct that conforms to the parsable command protocol. So we'll call that PW generator. And this struct requires two things, a static property called configuration of type command configuration. So we can create an instance of that and we'll only need two of its arguments, one for abstract and one for version. And for the abstract, we'll use the string generates a random password. And for the version, we'll just use 0.0.1. .0 That's up to you. Now the struct also requires a mutating run function that throws. So we'll leave the body empty for now. And then the last thing that we need is that when this file is presented, we call the struct's static mean function. And this is an extension of the parsable command protocol. Now I said that our utility would have an argument and some flags. So let's add that argument first, which is the length of a password. And we're going to set it to a default of eight, which can be overridden. Now you declare an argument using an argument property wrapper. I also want to add some help for this so that my end users can see what this is all about. And you'll see that in a minute. So as an argument of the property wrapper, we can pass in 
the help argument, and then a string that is simply saying specify length. Next then, in the run function, let's just print out our argument with some string interpolation, like the length is whatever the value of that length is that's our argument. So I can return now back to our command line and see if anything's broken. Let me just run the app one more time, and it compiles and fetches our argument parser package. After a few seconds, we see that it prints out length 8, which is the default length. If we want to pass in a different password length, since it's an argument, we can call swift run pw generator, and then pass in the value for our argument, say 10. Great, we see it's working. So now all we have to do is go back and add some flags and code a generated password utility and that prints out then instead of the length, it'll print out our generated password. But before I do that, let me just type swift run pw generator dash h. Oops, not swaft. I mean swift. This brings up our help for our utility. The overview is our abstract. And the usage looks a bit strange. Instead of typing pw generator followed by the length argument, it looks like I could also use pw dash generator. Now I see the argument help, which I entered, but it also lists the default for me as well. There are two options, both of which are the system defaults version, which will give me the version number, and I'll check that shortly. And to get to this help screen, I could have either entered dash h or dash dash help, the long version of that flag. So let's just check to get the version here. I'll run swift run pw generator using the long dash dash version. We get what we entered. So let's move on now to adding flags. I'll need three flags, one for uppercase, one for special characters, and one for numbers, all three being false. And we'll use a flag property wrapper to define them. So let's start with uppercase being false. Like our argument, we can add help. But recall that with help option, we had a short and a long version, a dash and two dashes with the full word. Well, for this one, I only want to make the short version available. So I can use the name argument here and specify that I want short only. And then I'll add a help string to provide some help text. Let me copy and paste that two more times, one for the special characters and one for number and alter the help accordingly. So now let's code our run routine. Let me replace this print statement here and first create four strings. The first one I'll simply call ucase, and it's simply going to be a string listing all the capital letters of the alphabet, all the way from A up to Z, or Z, depending on where you live. I'm going to create one called digits for all of the digits from 0 through 9, inclusive. And then for my L case, I'm just going to use the U case letters and specify that they're lower cased. And this is going to be our default. And finally, then I'll create one called symbols. And then I'll enter a string containing all of the special characters that I want to be able to make available as options in our password. Now to create the password, I'll start with an empty string. And then I'm going to run a loop from 0 right up to the length minus 1, so whatever we passed in, and then add to our password string. Now I want all of my choices to be random, meaning, say, if I want uppercase letters, I may not want to in the first character. So I can do an if statement first to see if I have specified that I want uppercase via the flag option, 
and then do a random on bool, which is either going to be true or false. And if it's true, I will add to the password using the plus equal, and then grab a random element from the UK string, which is a string dot element. So I'll need to convert it to a string. So it's not always going to grab an uppercase letter, only if the random element is true. And then I'll continue by ignoring the next two flags, because if it were true, we'll have already had our character for that iteration's place in our password. And of course, this random element has to be unwrapped. Now I can repeat that same process for numbers in the same way, just replacing uppercase with numbers and ucase with digits. And then I can do exactly the same thing with special characters and making sure that I use the symbol string that I created. And then if none of those conditions apply, meaning we've received false in every single one of our options, we'll just add a lowercase random element. And after that loop has gone through, we can print out the password. And these properties here don't need to be variables, they can be constants. So let me change them on mass to be lets. Time to test. Well, let me first run the help to see if my help is working. And I do that by using the swift run and then providing our command name, which is PW generator, followed by the dash H help option. Those flags we created are all listed under the options section with the short flag option only. And I see in our usage definition, I can optionally pass in a length and use any one of those flags. Let's try generating a password with all three flags of length 10. How about the default length, but include some uppercase letters as well as the default lowercase letters? Now, how about the default lowercase letters with some numbers and special characters, but no uppercase, but set the length to 15. Great, it looks like it's working. Well, the issue right now is that our utility requires that we're in that project folder to run. So what we'll need to do now is to build it for release. And I do that with the build configuration option of release. So Swift build using the option configuration, dash dash configuration, followed by release. And it may take some time for this to actually build. But once it's completed, I'll be able to copy my build, which is a hidden file in the package, to my local bin folder. So I'll do the CP minus F, and then the path is dot build slash release slash whatever my utility name is, in my case, PW generator, and it's going to get copied to the USR slash local slash bin slash PW generator directory. Now I'll need to exit terminal so that it'll be recognized, and then I can open again in a new window. So let me just get out of that directory that I'm in now and CD to my root folder so that I'm no longer in the PW generator folder. And since it's been built, my command line application is now just using PW generator without having to specify Swift run. And I can add some flags like USN for uppercase, symbols and numbers, and specify a length of 10. And when I hit enter, I get that random password. Now I, I, I see that I don't get any symbols, but that's just the luck of the draw. Here I've run it a few more times and I get some special characters. It's totally random, and thus we have a nice little random number generator. Well, I know this is getting long, but stick with me because I think you might find this second utility useful. And what I'm going to do is to create a utility that will either encrypt or decrypt a text file and save it as another file. 
And this might be useful if you want to send some confidential information to someone, and only they will be able to decrypt it and read it. And what you'll need to do is to create a unique password to be used for the encryption and decryption. Well, we've already created that password generator that we can use so we create a secret password. So let's work on the Cypher utility. And for this, I'm going to need a second Swift package that will help me with the encryption and decryption because I'm just not that smart to create that on my own. And I've come across this one called rencryptor. So when I create my Swift package, I'll need to add both the argument parser and the rencryptor Swift packages. So this is a repeat of what we did in the first one. So here are the steps. First, create a new directory on the desktop and CD into that directory. Next, create a Swift package using the initializer with the type option specifying executable. Run the project to build it. Open the Swift package in Xcode and add first the Swift argument parser dependency exactly as before. I'm not adding a platform argument this time. Now, I'm not going to be adding any tests, and I could have done this in the last example as well, but for here, let me just remove the test target but I'll add the dependency for the argument parser for the executable target. For the rencryptor, I'm going to return to the website and copy that URL as the package dependency. And I can add that directly to the executable target dependency as well using rencryptor for the name, and then nab the back end of the URL here. Let's open the main.swift file and import argument parser, foundation, and our encryptor. Create a cipher struct that conforms to the parsable command protocol. Recall that it requires three things. First, a static configuration property, and make sure that you include an abstract and version for your help. It requires a mutating throwing run function. And it requires the struct's static main function. We're going to have one argument, two options, and one flag. And each of these properties use the corresponding property wrappers. The argument is our password. For the options, one will be for the name of the input file, and the second one will be the name for our output file. And for the flag, We'll add that if we want to decrypt instead of encrypt. So the default is going to be false, meaning that without a flag, we're going to be encrypting the file. Let me add some help for the argument. And then for our options and our flag, I want to offer both the short and the long naming options meaning just either a single dash followed by the first letter of the variable name or two dashes followed by the variable name, as we saw for help. And we do this by passing in the name argument for the property wrapper using the dot short and long option. And again, I want to offer some help text too. And I can repeat this for the other two properties. We're going to have some throwing functions. So let me create an error struct so that I can print out the error description if we run into an error. I'll call the struct 
runtime error. And I'm going to have it conform to the error and the custom string convertible protocols. This way, I can create a variable called description as a string and initialize it. We're going to need to either encrypt or decrypt a file that we pass into the command line and add that converted string to a new string that we'll call converted that will be initialized first as being empty. Next, we can use a guard let to try and extract the contents of the file that we passed in using our input file option. And if it fails, we can throw that runtime error that it could not read from that file input file. If I return to the R encryptor website now, I, I see that there are two functions that we can call. One that encrypts data for encryption, and another that is a throwing function that decrypts the data that it receives. So we'll want to use these two functions. So I'm going to return to my cipher struct now and create two helper functions here. The first one then will be the encrypt function that's going to encrypt the contents of our input string. So we'll call it encrypt contents that has a string parameter that returns a string. First, I'll convert that string to data using UTF-8 and assign it to a property called contents data. Then I can use the rencryptors encrypt function, passing in that data using the specified password that we've also passed in and assign it to another property called cipher data. Once encrypted, we can then encode the data using the base64 encoded string and return it. Contents data must be unwrapped. The second function that we call is going to be decrypt contents. And it's going to receive the encrypted contents, that is a string from our input. And it will return another string. But this is going to be using our rencryptor decrypt function that can throw. So we need to mark it as a throwing function, and then we'll pass any errors on up to the caller. So first we can initialize our data as base64 encoded for our string and assign it to a property called encrypt data. Next we try to decrypt it using the rencryptor function, using this data with the password that we passed in and assign it to the decrypted data property. We can then convert this string using UTF-8 encoding and assign it to another property called decrypted string and then return it. So now we have strings coming from both of these functions. We have everything that we need. So if the decrypt flag was included in our call, we'll call the decrypt function. And this is a throwing function, so we'll need to do that in a do catch block. So we can try to decrypt the input and assign it to our converted string. If an error is thrown, we catch it and throw another runtime error. If we're not decrypting, we must be encrypting. So we can call the encrypt content function passing in that same input and then assign it to converted. And now that we have the converted string, we can use a guard let to try and write it to our output file with atomically true and using UTF-8 encoding. And if for some reason that fails, we'll throw another runtime error. Time to test. Back in the terminal, let's run Cypher with the long help option. As this is the first time that it's run since we've added our two dependencies, it will pull them both down 
as dependencies before running. Once that's completed, I see that our help includes our usage and password arguments. Notice we have both the short and long versions of our options and flags. The short version is fine, but for the long version, the input file and output file being camel case properties have been split into input and output dash file. I tend to always use the short versions anyway, so let's just try. If I list the files in this directory, I see that there is a readme markdown file, and that's just a text document. So I'm going to encrypt it and save it back as a new file. So first I'll need a password. So let's use our PW generator to create one using all three flags. Great. Let me copy that to my clipboard now. And I can use the swift run to call the cipher utility. I'll use the dash I option to specify the input file name, which is our readme file. I can use the dash O option to specify the name that I want to use for my encrypted file. So let me just make one up. And then because password is just an argument, there's no flag to be specified. I can just paste in that argument, which was our copied password. And I can run this and it seems successful. If I use ls-l to see the directory listing, I see it's there. Let me return to the finder. I can see it and open it in text edit. And I see indeed that there is some encrypted gobbledygook here. So I need to test whether it was encrypted properly and that I can decrypt it. So let me delete the original readme file and see if I can do that. Well, I can bring up the previous command and simply reverse the I and the O. Remember, the order for options doesn't matter. I will need that same password, so I don't need to change it. But this time I need to add that additional flag for decrypt. So I can use a minus D somewhere, so why not at the end? So let me run that. As I return to Finder, I see yes, there's a readme file. And if I open it in my markdown editor of choice, which happens to be Typora, I can see that it's looking good. I've successfully encrypted and decrypted a file using my password. Now the final thing that I need to do then is to build it with the release configuration option. I can then copy the build to my bin folder so that I can use it anywhere without having to specify Swift Run. Let me just go and check the directory to see if it's there. And sure enough, it's been copied. I can use that command now anywhere on my system. Well, that's it. You can now create a nice password and encrypt your documents to securely send them to your friends and colleagues. You just have to make sure that you send them the password and your decrypting command line utility. I hope you found this tutorial useful because I use the command line a lot now when I have to manipulate a lot of text documents. I'm comfortable doing that in Swift, so this gives me a lot of power at my command. Thanks for watching.